recognise the uh, direction that the Chairman has given and that is cutting straight to the chase. And so I will do that. Uh, in saying that, it will be fair to say that the um, feedback and uh, the results of the, cons uh, the uh, discussions that were held amongst uh, our various Tai Whenua is that the overwhelming uh, outcome of those was that Māori wished to see Māori representation at this council table. And so with that, bearing that in mind, our option would be that council move to establish a or more than a Māori constituent. So that's would that's would be the, the recommendation coming from overall from the various four Tai Whenua uh, that make up the Māori advisory, Māori statutory advisory committee. It's also been supported by members of the uh, regional planning committee, the Māori members of the regional planning committee as well. We understand the issues surrounding it, not only for ourselves, also for you as councillors and also for the wider wider public. We ask you to take into consideration when making your deliberations today the value that Māori bring not, not only to this council but to this region. And I ask you to take that into consideration and I use the example of the waste disposal plant that are now currently situated in Hastings and in Napier. Those plants came about by Māori pushing to have a far better disposal system in place than what was being uh, recommended by either Hastings City Council or Napier City Council and to some degree supported by Regional Council we were required to go to the environmental court in order to have our views expressed. We can all see the outcome of that and how that has benefited not only the environment of our, of our region and especially our Hawk Bay, but also the financial uh, value that that proposition brought to, to the region by placing a scheme in there that had reduced the overall expected running costs of a uh, waste treatment plant. There are many demonstrations of that going back over time of the value that Māori have brought to the region. One can say that actually we have brought value right back from the establishment of uh, colonialism to this country. We have endorsed the relationship and the partnership of settlement of this region. The other thing that was highlighted through those uh, constitutional, uh, sorry, consultative hui was the value and relationship that Māori have to our environment. And when you look at the, um, the uh, main function and role of this committee, uh, environment protection is one of the main uh, principal uh, pieces of work of this council. Māori have a, some may say, uh, a um umbilical relationship to the environment. And I say that as when you go back and look at our stories and our whakapapa around the creation of the universe, you will see where our relationship to the environment starts from. It starts from the separation of Papa Tūnuku and, and Anginui, where the environment's the, the celestial environmental gods uh, we use to separate and bring life. So I'm referring there to uh, Tane Mahuta, Tafiri Mati, Tongaroa, all those environmental entities are part of our inner being. And so we have this unique, and it's not just I'm not just saying that it's only unique to Māori and no one else, but we do have this unique relationship and history with our environment. We are appreciative of the partnership 
that we have established and relationship we have established with the Hawke's Bay Regional Council up to this point. We recognise the Māori Stannery Advisory Committee. We also have the re recognise the rec recent establishment of the Regional Planning Committee. But those, those two committees do not give us a voice at this, the final decision-making table. And it is at this level that we wish to further participate. We believe we have earned the right to sit at this table. We believe we have dem demonstrated over time, again and again, the value that we can bring to the region of Hawke's Bay. We believe that our added beliefs and our closeness to our environment will enhance the decision making of this council. We ask, these, we ask for this knowing that the councillors are, are required to take on the views of the wider, wider community. And we acknowledge that. But we also ask that you give respect, that you give us the promise of what the Treaty of Waitangi uh, set out to do and its principles, which was to, to allow us, alongside the Council, to lead and to help set out uh, the environmental and uh, economic, uh, economic, what's the word I'm looking for, advantages that, that come out of such a committee as this, a council as this. I'm not going to add too much more to that other than to say, although that was the general uh, outcome of our consultational hui that Māori would like to see the establishment of Māori representation, it was not the view of all. There were one or two who felt that we shouldn't participate, period, with regional council. There were others who felt that actually the, the, the participation or, or the potential offer of a uh, Māori wards was actually not enough. In actual fact, we should be having a 50-50 a partnership. But at the end of the day, uh, there was uh, overwhelming support, at least 95% uh, from those that attended the hui, that there be established Māori wards. Mr Chairman, I'm going to leave it at that. I believe I've, I've kept to your instructions. And I'll open, I'll leave it, hand it back to you, Mr Chairman. I want to thank you for that. <clears throat> what we were looking for here was a strong statement of why the council should look to a particular thing. And I want to say thank you. You gave it a very clear direction, a very thoughtful presentation. Thank you. Now, I thought it would be opportune for councillors to go around the council table. We've all had this on the table for a while. This is no surprise. And I thought it would be very helpful if we went around the council table and invited everybody to see that what they thought. And then once we've got that, we can have a discussion. All right. Is Mike uh, prepared to respond to some questions before we do that? Oh, well, I was hoping to get straight to the debate, but... Hmm? Okay, you're upsetting my rhythm, but you do that from time to time, Tom, <laughs> Councillor Balfour. Questions to Mike? Just, uh, uh, I guess my question has to do with uh, uh, the uh, broader public uh, response to this or, or sense of it. We just went through a very specific, dedicated process of understanding uh, where Maori are on the issue, uh, which yielded a not surprising result. Uh, we've done nothing similar that I'm aware of to ascertain where the broader community is on the issue. Do you think we should? I think the, the difference here uh, that this council, the practice that this council has used compared to others, that it, you actually gave, um, you put the question back out to the Māori community. When I look at the Hastings District Council and the Napier District Council, if you like, they kept that in-house. And so 
one could actually ask whether they actually got the views of, of the wider Māori community. The second question is your question in regards to should it be extended further out than the consultation further out into the Māori, uh, into the wider, wider community. If you look at the uh, the uh, chart behind me, you will see actually there's, even though we are asking for this particular, um, the council to go straight to declaring uh, Māori constituencies, there is still the opportunity for public to actually voice their, their concerns by way of uh, constructing a poll. So it's not as though the council would actually be um, putting the general public to the side or, or disregarding public, the general public. There is a mechanism that allows that to take place. It does, it does mean that public are actually, the wider public are actually asked to lead that themselves rather than, rather than the council uh, go out and seek that consultation directly. Thank I think, think it's a question of how brave, uh, not so much how brave, it's a, I think it's more of a question of what value the council place uh, around Māori representation at this, at this table. Just to, for me to follow up. Well, I have a slight difficulty with this, mm -hmm. in that the question you're asking was should actually be a question you ask to this council this is a question. The question is, you know, what should council do on consultation? No, I, I, no it's not. I, I would like to know what, as, 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 as the designated voice, it appears, of, of, of this part of the community, I'd like to know how, uh, how uh, he feels the, the community might react to various scenarios that we might adopt here today. Uh, we don't have to leave it in the hands of the community to initiate a poll, for example. Uh, the council could say uh, we would like to see a poll uh, on this issue. Uh, based on your soundings, would you feel that was a useful thing to do, a not useful thing to do, an inappropriate thing to do, a smart thing to do? Well, he's actually given you the answer, but we'll ask him to give the answer again. In answer to your question, uh, Councillor Belford, I would say I believe that you should uh, strongly consider uh, the, the views that I am expressing to you this morning in regards to the view of, of the Māori community. I can't speak for your uh, conscience, only you can speak for that. But I will say this to you, yesterday uh, I attended along with members of the Regional Council uh, a trip to the uh, 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 Uruweras to consult with uh, uh, to hoi in regards to a number of issues that affect this regional council. Uh, they were going through similar issues themselves around uh, Māori representation at various council levels. As we all know, Tūhoi are a region who, who protect and uh, treasure their uh, isolation. And they have done so for over centuries. But even they are starting to realise that they actually from their point of view and from the point of view of the Bay of Plenty region, that they need Māori engagement at the regional decision-making table. I think that's really the question here. When you talk about consulting with the general public, actually the general public have got their seats here. They've got nine of them. They have nine of them. All we, all we are basically saying to you We'd like to see at least two of those, two seats added to that, or one at least, in regards to Māori representation directly from the Māori community. Shorta. Councillor Bevan. Thank you, Chair. Um, Mike, you mentioned the four hui that were held to discuss this issue. Um, I'd like to know how many people attended those hui and what engagement and discussion there has been more widely outside of those four hui. So Ed, you're quite correct there. Uh, so there were four um, hui uh, court, and we have the various and the four uh, representative Tai Whenua. It would be fair to say that there were not uh, huge volumes of um, individuals there, 
but it's also fair to say that that those four hui was the only place where this particular issue was, was discussed. Um, they were the official hui that we were caught, but I can assure you that this conversation was uh, widespread. Every opportunity we had, whether it be at tangi, weddings, birthdays, any other hui, the subject was raised to inform our, our wider community. As to the actual numbers uh, that were present, I'm looking for the number, Joyce. So, so it's, this is an, uh, number six of Huia Iwi. So you'll see there's ranges from 10 to 20. We're uh, present in those uh, four regions. So as I said to you, they weren't huge numbers, but it was not the only place where this this topic was canvassed. Thank you. Right, I'd like to go around the table to hear what people have to think. I think we've all had this for a while. This comes as no surprise, and uh, um, I think it's the opportunity for us to put on the table what our particular individual views are, and at that point, <coughs> look to see where the council goes. I'll start on my right uh, with Council Curtin. Um, Mr Chair, before commencing, are you anticipating uh, a subsequent debate? Are you seeking our, uh, our current um, e expression of opinion followed by debate? What's your plan of attack for this? Well, my plan was th that once we've gone through and had a look at <coughs> what everybody's thoughts were, when we then have got that, we would then be able to see where the, 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 the centre of weight of the council would be on which of the options are in front of us. At that point, I'd seek from Council a resolution along those lines, and having had the discussion beforehand, I thought the resolution <coughs> would have gone through pretty clearly. So rather than get someone to move one and someone to shake an amendment, let's go around the, around the room and see where <coughs> the weight of Council opinion is, then measure it up, and we'll then uh, have, I think, a pretty clear uh, indication of the, uh, of the resolution, and uh, we should be able to proceed reasonably easily from there. Thank you, Mr Chair, and therefore I'll be relatively brief in this conversation, but um, uh, we'll be interested in the um, further debate later on. Um, Mr Chair and Councillors, um, you, you probably are aware of my particular view on this issue, which has been, uh, I think, pretty consistent over uh, coming up for uh, my fifth term on Council. Um, I've applauded the Council for its move in establishing the Māori Committee. Um, I'm very enthusiastic about the uh, Regional Planning Committee and its, and its um, coming into being, and particularly value, and that's the term that Mike used, value the contribution that Māori make uh, to Council and have done for a considerable period of time. My view is this, and I've written about this and thought about it a lot, is that um, Participation by Māori uh, and the democracy that we run in New Zealand is, in my view, the best democracy in the world. I don't think there is a nation anywhere uh, where participation is, is enabled in the way that we do. I think it's been enhanced by uh, MMP political environment. Some would disagree vehemently with that, but the reality is a voice is given now uh, to all manner and persuasions in our community and um, what I'd like to see is the obvious um, consequence of a train of thought, a philosophy <coughs> commencing something like 170 years ago, 1840, uh, where participation and partnership uh, a very, very um, forward-thinking view of the world was initiated, followed by the establishment of Māori constituency at um, our national level or our parliamentary level. And um, I'm very, therefore, supportive of um, continuing that um, visionary approach to our democratic process at our regional level. I'm very surprised that it hasn't been a part of that equation uh, for a much longer period than uh, this opportunity pre pre presents today. 
I'd finally, Mr Chair, make this comment that um, this is a challenge not only for this council to, to participate and to share the decision making, partner the decision making, it's also a challenge for Māori uh, because Māori at present are represented by the RPC and Māori Committee which are not elected uh, from their own constituency, their own hapu marae, um, uh, iwi. Uh, this is a new challenge for Māori because now uh, there will be new arrangements if this comes to pass for a much broader participation by Māori right throughout the community. And by that I say uh, there are something like 80% of Māori that do not participate, do not affiliate, are not associated with the marae hapu iwi. Uh, now, they need a voice too, and I'm seeing this uh, as a challenge to Māori uh, in the usual sense that they, there will be uh, a, a challenge coming to Māori around that. There will be people that will come forward and participate that are not participating now. To my way, Mr Chair, finally, <laughs> this is an insurance policy for safety, security and a progressive community, and I look forward uh, to the, the views of my colleagues today. If you don't mind, Councillor Curtin, uh, are you saying to us that you would support the establishment of Māori constituency today? I think you can take that as read, Mr Chair. Just to be clear, Councillor Balfour. <coughs> uh, I'm undecided on the issue at the moment. Um, uh, I'm not entirely persuaded of either the wisdom or the equity uh, of moving in this direction, uh, but I'd like to hear what others have to say about that. The most uh, compelling argument I, I hear in favor is the last one that uh, the Councillor Curtin just raised of, uh, of representation of the broader uh, married community, um, albeit one could argue that that door uh, stands open at the moment. Uh, for Maori to raise hands and run under the under the uh, electoral system as it stands, but be that as it may, I I, I I take that as a as as really the most significant point. Uh, Mike asked to me to appeal to my conscience. Uh, I've only been part of this country for 13 years, uh, so I'm not aware that I have any descendants who stood on either side of the battle line uh, uh, previously. So uh, I, don't, I don't particularly have a conscience uh, uh, on this issue. Uh, I've, I've spoken in the past uh, about uh, what I call meritocracy uh, and any system, including uh, the two committees we have today, are perfectly capable of serving up excellent people and they're perfectly capable of, of serving up mediocrity. Uh, and the electoral process has the same pros and cons to it, uh, so uh, so I don't I don't see one or the other as really particularly uh, uh, putting us on a path to uh, better quote unquote representation uh, of Mary. But I am I am sensitive to the point that Neil raised at the at the very end. So I'm eager to hear what others have to say about this. The other thing is, to the degree I have talked to people about it. Uh, uh, there's a, you know, uh, total unawareness, really, that we're considering this issue uh, in the constituency that I normally traffic in, uh, which is a fairly engaged one uh, and, and follows public matters pretty closely. And so uh, I don't really feel I have a clue as, as to where uh, the broader public uh, stands that, that I'm supposed to be here representing as well. Uh, and uh, so I, I have that uh, concern in the back of my mind as well as to what the right process would be going forward uh, on this without uh, some greater evidence as to where folks uh, uh, stand on the issue, what their concerns are and so forth. People that I know who, who are very uh, simpatico with the uh, with the Maori community, work closely with it, uh, share the worldview, and so forth, are unclear as to where they are on this matter. Uh, and uh, 
you know, part of me wants to hear more of that surface. Councillor Wilson. Red light, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is a, an interesting discussion, and I do agree with Councillor Curtin, well overdue. I mean, other than perhaps one councillor in the history of this place, and I'll stand to be corrected, and I suspect I'm wrong, but there wouldn't be many more, uh, has been Māori elected at large. One or maybe two. Um, I, would have to dig that out. But I can't help but go back to my home patch, and this is one of the few discussions that Council will have, that actually you do have to consider your constituency, even though we come here with a regional view. Um, and I look at what they're going through at the moment at the district level. So there was a poll, uh, they ha ran a referendum, and um, now they've got three Māori seats, three at-large seats uh, for general population and three for the Māori role at-large. That, that's what it looks like it's going to be. It's already starting to tear that community apart. We're pretty well colourblind up there, 61% Māori. Um, you know, the uh, challenges of representation are not really around so much the um, where you've come from, but it's the challenges that face the district, the tiny district with a small rating base and a million acres, and uh, creates some challenges, you know. Um, the bit that I come back to, and I thought about this yesterday, and it was interesting listening at that same hui that uh, Mr Paku was at, listening to, to the uh, reasoning from Tuhoi around um, why they haven't at this, up till now, seeked or, or sought um, Māori representation on any of the councils that, that are part of their rohi. Um, the, the one that they came back to was mana whenua. And I see a challenge going forward when you elect one or two people uh, to represent the whole region, but in effect they will have a hapu behind them somewhere uh, and they will be asked to make decisions that affect other hapu and other rohi. And I don't know enough about what this process will end up looking like to support that. The last thing I'll say is um, general representation for Whitehall, million acres, eight and a half thousand people, it's always been contentious. I think we're plus 48 per cent or some such thing to, to get representation. But you can't go past the fact there's still a million acres up there in that district. Um, it would be very hard for a Māori to stand and win the general seat. And I don't think that's fair. And that's what the district council's running up against at the moment, where not so much who do I stand for, there's three Māori, three Pākehā on that council today with the old rules. Now they're gonna be prescribed with new rules. They're not happy. So, even though I suspect it was Pākehā that put those rules in place because we are so colourblind and tolerant, et cetera, and accepting and understanding, it was the Pākehā vote that put that in place. Um, Māori now are not happy. And that's a challenge. So I can't support it on that basis. Can't support, can't support, uh, support the seats as they are today. I could support a poll. I couldn't support 230Ks worth of poll, but I could support a poll at the next election. Councillor Bevan. Thank you, Chair. Um, my views on this matter are shaped by two considerations, I suppose. Um, the first is the electoral process. So what what we're being asked to do here is to make what I'd regard as a pretty significant change to the electoral process for the Hawke's Bay Regional Council in having two um, Māori constituency seats as part of the representation. Um, and now that I understand the process we're going through, effectively five people can make that decision because all it needs is a 5-4 majority here and the only way 
to overturn that is to have a, um, a poll amongst the people and you need to get 5% um, of the people to um, petition for that poll to happen. 5% means you need to get 7,000 people to sign a petition before you could overturn the decision of five people around this table. Now that strikes me as completely undemocratic and that's a real problem for me. And the amount of consultation that's happened, as we've heard, is pretty much zero. We had between 10 and 20 people turn up at Four Hui. That might be 50 or 60 people who have been consulted. There are 28,000 Māori on the rolls, according to the numbers in these papers here, of whom 60 have turned up to Hui to discuss this matter, and there's been no discussion amongst um, Pākehās that I'm aware of at all. And I just don't think that five people have the authority or the mandate to make such a decision. So I'm somewhat in Fenton's camp on this matter. I could support a poll on this so that the people of Hawke's Bay can decide on this matter, but I don't see how we have got the right to make that decision sitting around this table today. So that's that's the electoral part of the part of the considerations for me. The second part of the considerations is um, how do we make sure that we have fair and proper representation of the iwi view of the world in the matters that we are responsible for and we have to look back at the other ways other than having two councillors who are iwi sitting around this table that that happens and you therefore have to consider um, are the views heard through um, our own staff, are the views heard through the Māori Standing Committee, are those views heard through the RPC? And if you and if you consider that that is a sufficient representation for the iwi view of the world to be heard in our decision-making processes, then having two Māori seats is not necessary. Councillor Bailey. Uh, <coughs> thank you, Chair. Um, I looked at this, uh, I, I, I broke this whole process into two parts, well, this whole question into two parts, because I thought it was uh, quite important to do that. First question to me in my mind was, um, do we actually want to do this? And then the second part of that question that follows on from that is, how, is the process that we go through. And um, it certainly appears um, from what the comments that Councillor Wilson and Councillor Bevan has made, that that process may be important to them, so I'm not too sure how we're going to deal with that particular issue, but that's fine. Um, with the question as to whether we should go ahead and, and do this, um, I look back and reflect on my journey since I got involved and in, um, actively involved in politics, and a lot of it has been around, um, a lot of it has been around dealing with, dealing or, or thinking about and trying to come to grips and understand issues around the T Treaty, um, and certainly what the terms of like partnership means. And one of the things I've really enjoyed being on council in the last 12 months or so is, is that it has allowed me to take a much more active um, participating role in, in, in all those sort of issues and, and what that actually means and being involved with decisions that are, and discussions that are around that. And it's brought me to this um, conclusion that, uh, and I, I mean, I hear I'm a little Pakeha boy and I kind of make these things a little bit simplistic, but it's like there's a, there's a Māori worldview which is completely different from that of the Pakeha worldview. And I, I get the feeling that even though we have um, the Regional Planning Committee, which I, I look as an entirely separate issue in terms of that's to do with um, regional uh, or RMA issues, and we have a, a Māori consultative um, a consultation uh, committee, it is only a consultation committee. It doesn't actually sit around the table here and, and, be, and are able to put their hands up and, and influence decisions in terms of the vote taking. So I, I kind of get the, um, in my, my view from the way I look at it, from the way I'm looking at it, is that whilst we have, you know, we, we take consultation, I think until someone, we actually sit around, have someone sitting around the table and able to put their hand up, um, I think the consultation could just be seen as a sop. In terms of, um, comments that have been made around um, we haven't gone out and canvassed um, the views of, of uh, the Pākehā community around this issue. Uh, I only need to look at the disappointment expressed by, um, the, as Councillor Belford so 
eloquently put it, um, the constituency he normally deals, you know, circles, the circles he normally deal, uh, is involved in, the disappointment expressed by the community that I'm involved in um, over Napier City Council's decision not to proceed along these lines, I think was a pretty good indicator to me that um, there would be uh, significant support for this in the community. I also look at um, feedback which I've asked from people that I know down in Palmerston North as to how the community down there has taken the Palmerston North City Council's decision to take this take this step, and there really hasn't been a, a, a real there haven't been people beating the door down to, to do anything about it. So um, I think the world's moved on. I think we've become more accepting. We've become more understanding of our requirements as a community under the, under the T Treaty and about having to um, be in partnership and governance. So I'm, I'm not so um, terribly uh, concerned about um, uh, having to seek the, directly seek the views of the whole community but I wouldn't be upset if there was a poll on this particular issue. But in the meantime, um, because you've asked the question, Chair, I'll be supporting um, the uh, proposal to add uh, seats around the table. Councillor Hewitt. Thank you. Um, Mike, I'd like to acknowledge you and your supporters who've come along here this morning and the heartfelt presentation that you have, have given. I've certainly listened and you've, you're incredibly persuasive. I, am, I come from a, um, just a fundamental base that I don't support representation based on race, religion or gender. I think that um, people around this table should and can be uh, appointed on their merits, and I uh, note in the um, in the weekend's paper that uh, the the chair of Ngāti Kahanunu has argued that there are many talented and capable Maori that can stand on their own merits as general candidates. So, so that that's where I, I've come from, but I acknowledge that this issue is incredibly important to some people in our community, and so I've taken the time. I, I don't have blinkers on. I've taken the time to. Um, to go and sit in and listen to the Tamatea Tai Whenua members and their, and their views and thoughts, and, and I've sat in on, on the Māori Committee and, and listened to, to what's been spoken of there. And, um, and, and two, two polls came to me, two, two polarities. One was that um, only Māori can speak for, for Māori, and, you know, I get that. I, I'm not assuming, I'm, I'm elected to speak for the whole region, but I'm not assuming that I can speak for Māori if someone is telling me that's the case. I, I respect that. The other thing that, ca that um, came through was um, from Dr Roger Marker, who I greatly respect, and he said to me, look, our people are not ready for this. He was very, very concerned that there had not been time for consultation, and he said a lot of people can get hurt in this process. So I, I take those two viewpoints on board and, and I look regionally and I think we've, we've had quite a bit of division in our region over the last um, sort of three or four years and, and I, I'll name Ruatanifa that's been regionally divisive and the amalgamation debate has been, has been regionally divisive. I'm very concerned about a regional division that will be created out of, out of this debate and the other thing that concerns me is if there are only two seats in the representation process, then um, it's very likely they're going to come from Hiratonga. So uh, that, that concerns me because, you know, obviously I represent Central Hawke's Bay in the first instance. Um, where, where do we get left in, the, in that instance? So, so I, I flag those, um, who holds the mana whenua and uh, those issues. You, you challenged us, uh, Mike, uh, what value does council place on Maori representation? And since I've become an elected representative, I have gone and um, done my RMA papers. So, so I appreciate the whole um, Mataronga Māori representation, the world view. I've, I've taken the time to learn it. And, you know, live and breathe it and listen in the Regional Planning Committee, the Māori Committee. I, I place a huge value on that and I acknowledge that the, um, the importance that you've placed on, for instance, the wastewater um, systems. So, so I think it's incredibly important too. This is, but um, anyway, I'm, I'm going to come back as I've just still my, my thinking process is that there is a complete community <laughs> unawareness of this going on and I would not presume to speak for Mary on this if it's something that you're asking for then um, I think that it is more prudent that we do this thoughtfully and 
Today I'd either be going no based on my fundamental beliefs or I'd support the vote um, not for 230,000 but I would support the vote to be included just because I know that we have got um, a huge budget blowout coming forward so I'm trying to be prudent and respectful in this process but thank you for, yeah, for your time today. Thank you Debbie. Councillor Dick. Mr Chairman, I'll, I'll try and be brief. Um, I support a referendum being held in conjunction with the, the next general election. The reasons I do that are that I believe that uh, our approach to representation and matters of this nature should be evolutionary, not revolutionary, and they should be democratic and, and give everyone the opportunity. There's another reason uh, f in my mind to delay this matter for two years, and that is that we have big issues to deal with with present structures. Um, the Regional Planning Committee is a, a very worthwhile institution, but it's not working properly yet. Um, and th the last two major decisions out of that committee indicate that. Um, there is a, a high level of representation of um, both advisory and decision making people through RPC and um, and Murray Advisory Committee. Um, if the people of Hawke's Bay decide in two years that they want uh, to add two specific Murray constituencies, then well and good, I would support that entirely. But that's, that's where I am. Thank you, Councillor Dick. I now look to Councillor uh, uh, Graham. Are you there, Gra Rex? Yeah, I am. Thank you, Chair. And, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Councillor, for all those uh, non forceful points of view. Uh, but firstly, I want to advise you, Mike, uh, Mike Cocker, just in case anyone was confused, which Mike, I'm talking to, um, for your very. Uh, Thank you. 
Thank you, Rex. Uh, well, let me start from my perspective. I start uh, a long way back, and it's uh, with my grandmother who came from Britain, who arrived here in New Zealand having worked, uh, been part of, family-wise, the gatekeeper for a laird. My grandmother couldn't go into the forest without the permission of the laird because he owned the forest. They couldn't take any fish from the rivers because <coughs> The lead owned all the fishes. 
All the birds were owned by the laird, except the swans, because they were owned by the king. Everything was owned. When she came to New Zealand, she could walk down the beach, have free access, could go fishing in the rivers, do other things, and she thought she had come to paradise. And she got here to paradise uh, for one reason. Uh, it wasn't a battle. It was because of the Treaty of Waitangi. Settlers arrived here, and there was a discussion between the, the, the people who are here, Māori, who agreed to write into an arrangement with the Pākehā about how we arrived here. And we were part of the one country by invitation. So, Tom, there was no battle line. It was by invitation. And, and we have, as a lot of people, benefited enormously by this. Live in this wonderful land uh, by invitation, and we're here as of right of that invitation. And what we said at the time was that we would share things. It was about partnership. And in fact, what happened once we got in the door, we, in, the, in, the, in the door, we slammed it shut. The voice of Māori has not been heard around at this table except for once. And you're quite right, Fenton. So if our system was working so well, they would be here. But they haven't been. It isn't working. And I think that the issue here as a council is where Rex has put his finger on it is leadership. I don't accept the view that we have to rely on a poll. I don't. We make many decisions here which exercises power without a poll. Do we think for a moment that ratepayers turn up to this front door office and throw money out of their wallets and purses for us to build stock banks to go and do these other things? We don't. We exercise leadership and say this is in the benefit of the community. We exercise that leadership and we say we need to build stop banks. We need to do this, we need to do that, and by the way, this is the cost and you will pay this. We exercise leadership on all these issues. So why will we not exercise leadership on the issue of representation and on the issue of voice? I don't get this. We have as a country benefited, in my view, enormously because of the Māori seats in Parliament. If you look at the last 150 years, of New Zealand here, we've had by and large pretty good relationships because there's always been a vent and a place for the voice to be heard. No question about it. Go to other countries where it hasn't. Look all over the world. The Mapuche Indian in South America are still disadvantaged and there's rumblings going on and will never be solved because there is no place for a voice and no treaty. Everywhere you go there are these issues, but we in New Zealand have been unique and we've, been, we've benefited from it enormously. And I say it's time for this council to exercise some leadership and to make sure that representation is there for those who do not have the power and do not have the voice. This is not going to cost anybody anything for us to share from 9 to 11 seats. And as for a poll, well, we have had this decision made before. Uh, as to Peter's point about five making the decision, well, it would have been 40 people who made the decision for the whole country in the first instance and then there'll be nothing about that. And there was no opportunity for the public to actually have a poll to overturn it. It was done. And they would have grumbled about it, I have no doubt. But it has worked for us enormously well. There's been nothing better for this country than Māori representation at the highest level, and I think it would work enormously well for us to have uh, Māori representation around this table. Yes, we have the uh, RPC. I've sat on that. Uh, yes, we have the Māori Committee, and yes, I've sat on that. And I want to say to you, as good as this, it is just they make pre presentations to us. It is different from sitting at this table exercising a vote. There's rights in that. We haven't given that voice rights, and it's time that we gave that voice rights. Uh, we are here, and do, we, do I expect those with power to share it with the powerless? Those who have a voice to share it with the voiceless? No, I don't. I don't. We'll have all the same kerfuffle as before. We'll have the arguments, oh, it's about we shouldn't have special rights for people on religion. We shouldn't have special rights for this, shouldn't have special rights for that. Well, that's the argument to round it out because it's about maintaining people's control and power. They do not want to share it. Whereas this is an issue which goes back to the foundation of this country. The fact is, if you go and read the history, the Pākehā came to this part of Hawke's Bay, welcomed. It was not a row about it all. We were welcomed here because we thought that we would, would be good for the community. And having gotten here, we set up the institutions and effectively by the structures excluded people. That's what we did. 
Māori representation in all the councils around this country, around this, ca around this region, has been abysmal, with the exception of Wairo of late. So I think it's time for us to stand up for the people who haven't had a voice and give them a voice. For those who've never had the opportunity to be at this council table to exercise a vote, give them a vote. And if we go from 9 to 11, we're not going to be overwhelmed. Not at all. It's going to be sharing that and we will have to listen to the voices and we'll, we'll act accordingly. I think it will add enormously to the value of conversation here. And yes, we can put up arguments as to how it will be difficult to get the line drawn on the map and who will represent who. And also, Look, there's an old Chinese proverb, if the intention is to condemn, the evidence will be found. So if we want to bag this proposal, well, we'll find the evidence for that. But I think best for us to give an opportunity. So I am absolutely in favour of two people being, uh, this council making a decision to extend the uh, representation by two. Absolutely in favour of it. And I just think we should take a leadership position on it. And I have one other thing about it too. I remember Paul Holmes speaking to uh, the high school uh, he went to, and at the end of it, his theme all the way through was be generous. He said, in life things will come to you, but be generous. And he told all those kids to be generous. And I think uh, this here is the day when we should be generous. The power is here with nine people, and we should say we're prepared to share it. Prepared to share it and have 11 voices and do the right thing today. That's my view. I feel really passionately about this, and I wouldn't, uh, I'll argue for this any which way at all. And I don't think I have any, uh, anything else than to do to exercise some leadership on this, say what I think, and act on it. That's what I'll do today. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, um, unfortunately, I've got something else I'm committed to. Would you be able to propose a, a motion? and that we deal with this matter expeditiously. Sure. I can't see the point in going around the, the I agree table with that. again I, two or three times. No, I agree with that. I think we've got ourselves the point. So as I would see it at the moment, it's sitting evenly between those who would you know, support the increased representation of two and those who would support a poll. Can I just yeah. make it uneven? Uh, I, I would support the uh, position taken by uh, Councillor Dick and Bevan. Uh, I would only support this uh, in the instance of a poll being taken. I was going to ask, if somebody proposes one of these motions and it gets defeated, are we able to go to another motion on the paper? Just as everybody's had a discussion, but well, no, no, Mr. Chair, uh, I'm just conscious that Councillor Dick has said he. Well, Councillor Dick has aware of the importance of this okay. issue, and he should have made arrangements accordingly. All right. Okay, just trying to be exercise this. So, uh, the mover, Councillor Councillor Graham, would you like to speak? Yes, it's council, seconded by Councillor Curtin. One, two, Um, and not 
writing this, uh, maybe our town is gone, it's the way that our government is gone. Um, this is the right thing to do, and I say today, we should do it. We should make a stand in the ground today and do this thing today. Uh. Thank, thank you, Councillor Graham. Um, as seconder, I'll reserve my position. Are there any other speakers against the resolution? Councillor Hewitt. Onto the, the bathroom. <laughs> Surely we can have a speaker in, <laughs> in the interim until the chair returns. <laughs> Councillor Bevan. <laughs> Well, I'll, well, I'll speak. Use my my second as prerogative. Um, uh, oh, we've got the chair returning. I'll return to my seat uh, to deliver my second as debate. Look, uh, Mr. Chair, um, I appreciate. Um, the situation and, and the likelihood that, that uh, from the opinions canvassed around the table that uh, this resolution stands to be lost by the look of it, uh, which I think is unfortunate. Uh, I'd hoped that we could in fact put the boot on the other foot in this occasion so that um, if there was uh, sufficient opposition to this move, uh, there would be a five that those parties opposed. and. Let's face it, there are significant numbers in our community that uh, would oppose um, um, this proposition based on a number of the arguments we've heard this morning. For example, you know, Māori are not ready. Uh, they're not ready after 150 years to uh, exert their vote around the table. Um, that might be challenging for Māori to uh, organise themselves in that arrangement. Uh, I do hear, though, some of those arguments that say we've got a perfectly functional Māori committee RPC arrangement already in place, but this is the issue. When push comes to shove, when those advisory committees uh, provide uh, strong advice to council that this is what they want, the thing we do is ignore it. We reject it and we move on because it threatens the autonomy of the status quo. And that's most unfortunate. Um, uh, there clearly um, is a need for Māori rep representation around this table. Uh, it, it is, in my view, a patronising thing to say that people of the ilk of uh, Mike Paku and Mike Mohi, etc., cannot exert um, a considered opinion around the table because they're not ready. Of course they're ready. Um, we ought to take the step, provide the opportunity, and if there is substantial opposition from the community around it, a small number, 5% only, need rally themselves and present their case. Only 5% need to do that. The alternative, uh, which is clearly on the table now, is for a, the reverse to take place. So a poll in two years' time or at the next election asking the population at large uh, to um, support such a proposition. Uh, that is a recipe for failure. It will not succeed. We know that, and the proponents of that uh, proposition know that as well. That is a great sorrow that I have, uh, and that we have to wait a further six years before a further representation review, uh, before a different council comes to this table, uh, a pro probably a more enlightened one, uh, one where uh, the issues of um, uh, fair representation and leadership uh, might receive a better reception and that voice will be heard. I go back and, and concur finally with uh, the chairman's position on this. Leadership is needed. It is our opportunity to present that and provide that leadership. And I hope in the next minute or two, uh, councillors may change their position and accept that and put the issue fairly to the public of Hawke's Bay around the, uh, in a referendum in, at, at, ears, at, at, at this stage. That is um, inviting the public to um, offer their view now as opposed to a year's time. Thank you, Mr Chair. Any other speakers? Councillor Wilson. Thank you, Chair. 
Um, just to reiterate my point, uh, in the hometown, if this goes through, you will really struggle to see a Māori representing the general population of Wairau on the basis that the um, Māori um, constituency will have to vote for one person down here or in, in whatever the construct of the region is. To me, that's not fair. We very nearly had a Māori representing Wairau this election, if you think back, but for the sake of a couple of hundred votes. Um, I should support this on that basis, but I won't because I don't think it's fair. It's not fair for representation for um, that end of the, of the Rohi on the basis that it conscripts what representation should look like. The world is changing. How many Māori general, uh, general seats are there in Parliament this election? More than just the seven that were allocated. Um, I think the world is, is changing and I would expect to see uh, the value of the Māori voice at the voting end and I would welcome it, but not in this construct. Uh, I draw some lessons about this from the amalgamation effort. Uh, I was a, a very strong advocate of amalgamation. I was the principal drafter of the proposal uh, that we fought for uh, and spent a hell of a lot of energy and time trying to get that over the line as something that I thought was I thought was uh, uh, obvious on its face. Uh, and in the years since, I think the fact that it was obvious on its face has been kind of underscored uh, on a few occasions around this table. Uh, but one thing that I have to take away from it is uh, the public is very finicky about messing around with uh, its governance structure. Uh, and uh, we were, we who thought we had a, a uh, ironclad intellectual case and moral case that we were uh, heading down, you know, uh, God's path, were severely chastened uh, by the public. And so uh, if there are counselors uh, like uh, uh, Councillor Rex and, and uh, Councillor Barker and Councillor Curtin, who are, are so convinced that we're ready for this as a community and we should do it and so forth, fine. You can exert your leadership during the poll that I think a majority of us will support. Any other questions? Oh, sorry, any other comments? Contributions? Okay, we'll put the resolution to a vote. Oh, sure you do. Yes, uh, I'm sorry, Rex. It's uh, a little bit of a case of out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> sorry, but <laughs> technically you'll follow me. I apologise uh, profusely to you. You're here with us in spirit. Anyway, away you go.
no, 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 I don't want my base case covered up with my prongs taken away from me from the because of the province. My my little white my, my little village that I'm living in. That's what people voted on. They voted on an emotional thing, not is this best for our region as a whole. So and so if you go to the polls, um, and I agree with uh, Neil on this, if we go to a poll, we're more than likely to lose. But when we lose to the white, we're more than likely to lose for this reason. Now I know democracy is fragile, um, and don't always get the results that we want or love, but it is still a bad system. But it also gives us the parliamentary uh, democracy that we're polluted to. That in fact, we have um, those people that we send down to Parliament and they make big decisions for us on the fence and all sorts of other things. Sometimes you delegate uh, the people, delegate the right uh, decision making on particular items to their vote elected representatives. And this is one of those cases. If we don't do this today, um, we are letting a huge opportunity pass to have um, two uh, elected representatives from an entirely different constituency, one which we do not um, have around the table at the moment, um, despite the fact that um, uh, we have tried. We tried very hard. So I implore councillors to just think about this. Think about this very hard. This is a, a moment in time that we have an opportunity to do something really special and really unique in our region. Um, so don't take this lightly. And if you go on to the polls in two years' time, you might, you more than likely, as Councillor Kirby said, you will, you will lose. And that, that is the fact of the matter, and we all know that secretly in our hearts. So just want you to think about it as we go to the vote. Today, do something special for the other. Thanks. All right, thank you, Rex. I think, given the fact that uh, you are not here, we'll uh, uh, go straight to a show of hands, and you can tell us what you're going to vote. So. Uh, take resolution one. Well, we, we, we lose this as a group. We'll come back and have the same resolution, part of the other one. That was I was, I was going to do. Same. All right, let's do it. Resolution one. I put the resolution that the Hawkes Bay Regional Council receives and considers the Murray's con Murray constituency staff report. All those in favour of that, please say aye. Aye. Co contrary, no. Carried. I now come to resolution two and three, uh, that the, we resolve to establish uh, one or two Māori constituencies, etc. I put those, all of those in favour was... Chair, Sorry, Chair, I thought that the motion was that it was for two Māori constituencies. Yes. Sorry, can we clarify that? The number of constituencies is actually determined as part of the representation review what you're voting on is two representatives. I think that's what you're intending. Two more, yeah. The constituencies, um, yeah, so we're, it's allowing for the election of two representatives, if you carry on further down the line, that, down that line. Okay, so okay. Just two representatives, either in one or two constituencies. Yeah. Okay. So we've still got two. Yes. Okay. So we're still doing the one or two constituencies, but two representatives. Okay. Yeah, we're all clear on that. All right, all those in favour of that resolution will say aye. 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 Co contrary, no. no. Let's have a division called for. All right, all those who are in favour, raise one hand. I've got my hand up, Rex. Uh, Rex has got his hand up, so that's four. And against? It's defeated. Next. Move to the next resolution. Uh, we either decide to go ahead with a poll or not. Now, I think this is something you need to consider very carefully, councillors. I know that the putting up the poll was seen as an option uh, to, uh, uh, to the two constituencies, but there are implications on that if we go and do that, in my view. Well, uh, having the, this, is the, this is the point uh, about this. Uh, we had a poll in uh, New Plymouth, which at the end of it, 
It left people worse than what there was before. And, and, and the point that I would make again is that whilst we have people who advocate that the uh, public opinion is the only way to make decisions, <coughs> democracy, but it doesn't always work. And back in the history, we go back to the land of, uh, uh, we had decisions made publicly, uh, two people brought a case against Socrates because they said he was spreading dissent amongst the people. And then they agreed. So Socrates had to go and drink hemlock and died. And some time later, the people of Athens said, oh, we miss Socrates. So they brought the two people who brought the charges to him to, to court, and they convicted them. This is a salutary lesson about the fickleness of public opinion. Some things we do not decide on here. So you just be very careful what you invite. Let's be clear about this. And I'm just saying to you that I would think that you would need to make a considered decision whether to have no poll or a poll. So close the meeting, then, Chair. No, I, I, w I, want to, I want to move a resolution. I'd like to hear from Mike on this at this point. We have to, we have to preside. Uh, we, we can't have, can't have closed meeting. No. I have to either have nine. We either have to have not resolution nine, which resolves not to establish the constituencies and leaves us the status quo, or we have uh, decided to go to a poll. Well, Mr Chairman, the other option is the one on the board there, to resolve to hold a poll at the next election. But, that's, but I'm, I'm, I'm not disagreeing you're agreeing with me. So we either have a poll, we have a, either a poll immediately, or we have a poll at the next election. But I'm just, just suggesting to you that having a poll presents challenges. We want to think about this before we go ahead with it. Absolutely, and to do it now would be disastrous. And, and maybe to do it the next election might be exactly the same again. Oh, through, through, through you, Chair, can I ask a question of, of Mike? Yes, I will yeah, do Mike. Thank, thank you, Chair. Um, Mike, I was just wondering if the issue of, of holding or not holding a poll had been part of the consultation process that you'd been through, and have any, dis, any um, findings from that that you could perhaps uh, enlighten us on? Uh, uh, yes, so yes, it was, was part of the uh, overall uh, cons consultation. Uh, the over overwhelming uh, view of those at, uh, that were canvassed is that um, option one was the only real option that, from a Māori point of view, we were uh, prepared to uh, um, 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 entertain. Uh, I look at it this way. Um, we've had nine, we have nine fully informed councillors sitting here who struggled. You struggled here this morning to reach a decision. How do we feel? How do we feel the general public is going to be able to, to deal with this? I would say to you, if anything, I'd be in favour of, of no, no, no poll at all. To be fair, and I hope that's answered your question. Yep, yep. Right, we're clear on that. So, if it's helpful, I will move uh, item resolution nine. Resolves that not to establish Māori constituencies instructs the Chief Executive to give notice. Any debate? I plan to vote against that. Okay. Uh, I, I feel it is our responsibility if we think this is a path we want to take and should be on to bring our constituency with us. And I think that's the point of, of having a poll. I think it's the point of uh, uh, having it in the context of, of the next election. We can stand or fall on our, uh, on our uh, positions and, and leadership or lack of leadership or avoidance of the issue. Uh, from my standpoint, if I run in 2000 and whatever year it is, 19, uh, I would support Maori seats. And I would be willing to stand up in front of, of, of my electorate and make the case for it. But I am not ready to dictate the terms of it today. I'm just not ready. Uh, and uh, uh, I don't see that as an abdication of leadership and a lot of other straw men that have been thrown around here this morning. Uh, uh, what leadership is. Uh, is, is me trying to move the needle from where it is now, as, as Mike reads it, 
to, to where it is something that the community is in favor of and supports. And, and I'm prepared to go on the record today and say I, that's the role I would want to play uh, over the next two years. I want to see Maori representation work around this table through the committees that are already established. I want everybody to feel good about that. I want the community to feel that that is a benefit uh, to decision making in our region. And, and on that basis, let's take a further step. That's where I am. And I'm not prepared to support it otherwise. I'm also opposed to the resolution for exactly the same reasons as Councillor Belford is very eloquently outlined, Chair, and I want to signal that I will be moving uh, accordingly if this is lost. We moved and seconded, but in the light of the this contribution around the table, the, ch the mover and the seconder might withdraw it. <laughs> That, that's the resolution on the floor, but uh, technically uh, we can, uh, should we wish to, we can come back uh, sometime later down the track and initiate a referendum at the next election, should we wish to. It doesn't close it off for, forever. But the thing is, from just to, if we can just have it, the thing is that with this, Tom, uh, yes, it's all, you know, the point that you make is fair enough. But with these issues, there has to be an advocate for them. And I feel that unless there is a strong position of advocacy for Māori constituencies, other than by Māori themselves, this is going to hear themselves into a terrible trouble. It sounds like you and, and Councillor Curtin and, and, and uh, a number of people here have spoken. Rex, uh, uh, Paul Bailey, uh, I've added my voice to it. We're, we, that sound like we're ready to go and, and carry the cause. Uh, that's what it sounds like to me. Uh, so I, I don't see there's a lack of advocacy uh, for, for this position. Uh, I think there's a difference of opinion as to what the, what the right uh, framing and pursuit of the objective is. Right. Chair, Councillor Graham, what, would, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, of course well, we are. I'm sort of stunned that uh, we've lost the first one, so I'm sitting here quite stunned really. But um, um, I just want to <coughs> take it up uh, a little bit more with Tom. Does he, does he seriously think um, we could win? Councillor Bailey. Um, thank you, Chair. I think there's two um, distinct distinct questions in my well, two, the question in my mind is if we had voted in support of Māori constituencies um, and recommendations two and three, 
then it would have been up to those who oppose that particular position to organise the petition or, or, organise, or, or argue that in the poll, which is entirely different, I believe, from um, having a poll trying to, trying to get this proposal through um, and standing up and arguing, making that argument. I, I see them as being two arguments from two different sides. And um, <coughs> the, to, argue, to argue in a poll um, at the, at, that we should be um, putting, having the Maori constituencies will be a divisive issue in the community. And I think it's, and, and as Mike's pointed out, it's not one that um, I don't, the, the community, I don't think that from Mike's you know, indication is that the Māori community is not ready to have that, have that debate yet either from that point of view in terms of trying to manage that issue rather than just trying to defend their position. I think there's, there's two, you've got to look at it two different ways. So that's why <coughs> I support that we don't establish Māori constituencies at the time being. Can I just add to the discussion for Councillor uh, can I just say that my worry here uh, uh, about this is that if we initiate uh, such a referendum, and it does generate a very heated public debate, the brunt of the debate is going to be borne by Māoridom, not me or you. That's the problem. And if we're going to kick this ball off down the thing, I'd like to be assured that the people who are going to be at the brunt of this debate are prepared and willing to accept the consequences of it first. That's my, that's my issue here. That's my worry. That's why I'd like to have had, before we get to the, having a referendum, have talked to a bit specifically about a referendum with our Māori committee, with the RPC and in general to say, this is what we'd like to do. Do you, do you agree with it? Will you support it? Because we need to make sure that they were in the, in the swim too. But I thought we were dealing with this today at a special meeting because we did not have the luxury of any further uh, consultation, reflection, et cetera, et cetera, on the matter. Do we... Do you, the issue we have to do today is was on the decision of whether or not to establish two seats for the 2019 election. The 2019 election. This is the kick-off date for that. But should we wish to have a referendum on it in the 2019, 2000, what is it, 19 election, well, we can make that decision later. We don't need to make that decision today. So my, my view about this is that I prefer us to park this for a moment then send the message back to the Māori Committee and the RPC and others to say the Council is of a mind to run a referendum in the next election for two Māori seats, which we would support. Uh, do you support that and would you participate? That's what I would like to do. Yeah, I support that. I think to, to kick this ball off today without that consultation causes me a bit of angst, I've got to say to you. Yeah. Put the motion. Bruce, sorry. Yeah. 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 I'll put the motion. <laughs> I think we've got it. The motion is that we resolve uh, not to establish a Murray constituency for Hawkes Bay region, uh, region, and instructs the chief executive to give notice of that decision in that regard. That's the resolution, and we are going to vote for or against that. Uh, knowing that should we wish to have a poll on this at the 2018 election, we can make that decision later. We're clear on that. OK. All right, all those in favour will say aye. Well, aye. hang on, hang on, sorry. If the ch Chief Executive is to give notice of Council's decision, doesn't that preempt no. a, something at the um, election? Mr Chairman, can I suggest if we added the words uh, for the 2019 gen uh, local body elections, that might just clarify what that Resolution 9 uh, yes. has been confined to in this case? Yes. All right. Yep. So what, so what is it now? Hawkes Bay uh, so I was to, to establish, uh, establish Māori constituencies for Hawkes Bay Region for the, the 2019, 2019 election. Alright, so we're not going to do it for the 2019 election, but even having passed this resolution, we can subsequently this come back and have a decision whether or not to include a question of the 2019 election on whether or not we establish Māori constituencies. Yep. Alright, all those um, in favour... Um, oh, oh. Can I just um, make one point? So, um, being that I want to establish a constituency in the next election, mm -hmm. Against 
Well, can I say to you, uh, Councillor uh, Graham, that we, we had that vote uh, before your, 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 your voice in favour of doing so is recorded indelibly in the record, and we've moved on. <laughs> <laughs> OK. All right, I'll put the resolution. All those in favour will say aye. 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 Contrary, no. 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 Carried. Division. Division? Yeah. All right, all those in favour will raise their hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we've got against two. Three. Three. Right. So six three. Six three. <laughs> yeah, we have married constituents. Right. Okay, we've now so we've now decided that. Declare that the resolution nine is carried. And uh, I think the items for the special meeting are dealt with. Unless, sorry, Chair, you want to uh, invite the uh, Māori Standing Committee to provide further advice to the Council on the uh, yeah. question of a uh, of a poll. Very good selection, uh, very good suggestion. I can see why you're the Chief Executive. Uh, <laughs> I'd like the Māori Committee to uh, take on board the conversation we've had here, a very, I think, very open and robust debate. And I think it would be, uh, when you could report to us at some later date uh, on your thoughts on this, and at that point, the council will then consider whether or not it's going to have a question at the next uh, election on whether or not to uh, uh, establish two Māori seats. We didn't get like to add before we go. How long can that process unfold before you would say we need to make a, a call? Look, I. I, I Double check with Mrs. Hooper, but strictly speaking, uh, the, the Act appears to say at any time the Council can resolve, but obviously in terms of practicalities, we need to finalise the ballot papers and, and, and what have you uh, prior to, which is probably... So sometime I'm, in 2019 I'm, is when this yeah, decision yeah. would actually get made? Well, yes. it, well, it, well, it could be made next year. Uh, could be. But, but I, I, I'm going to guess probably th probably six months out, I'd say we'd want, pretty, we'd want to be clear. Uh, because obviously there's not just what's on the ballot paper, there's also um, uh, the, the, the public communication, the education, etc., which, which may or may not be recommended by the Māori Committee. So could, there might be a body of work to do. Could I, could I add a political uh, aspect to this? I would think if we're going to do this, we would need to have a good, long public discussion. And the sooner we make a decision about what we're going to do, the better for us. So I would think if we let this come spring up just before the next election would be a PR disaster. So the sooner the better, in my view, Mike, uh, make this decision so we can give a long-term signal and we can then work on it. Mr and Chairman. It would be inappropriate to put this issue somehow in the consultation process around the long-term plan? Uh, we're asking for the Māori Committee and the RPC to advise us firstly. So once we get that, We'll get that advice, then the council will determine where it's going to go and what it'll do next. That'll be the next step. Councillor Dick? Well, I was wondering whether it is worth trying to test in a preliminary way public opinion. I've, and I've, I'm of two minds of it. On the one hand, it, it may maybe stimulate negative feedback. On the other hand, it, there may be some, some wisdom that's conveyed to us. Yes, I think that's something, but I would see, firstly, let's get advice from the Māori Standard Committee, what they think, and then on the basis of that, we'll then proceed to figure out what the next steps are. And this would be, in my view, you know, quite a staged process we're going to pursue. So can, having public consultation on it in part of the long-term plan or part of something else could be all part of that. But I think the first step is to get advice from the Māori Standard Committee. Councillor Muddy the water. Thank you, the Chair. Um, I just want to add my uh, voice of thanks to Mike and acknowledge your input into this. Very important. It's a very important subject. It's not going to go away. I'm pleased that we're going to take it forward and consult more widely. Um, and I look forward to those discussions. And, and thank you for your efforts to date. Mike? I'd just like to thank the uh, councillors for their. Um, consideration this morning uh, it was always going to be a challenging question, uh, not only for the council but also for Māori and no doubt for the uh, wider wider public. Um, there is uh, the opportunity here for, the, for a, a later discussion around this and no doubt we'll get back to you with that. Um, 
Once again, I just want to thank, thank the council for, unlike uh, Hastings and Napier, who I felt never really tested uh, the question around Māori, Māori representation, I believe the regional council has done that. And although we may not have uh, ended up with the result that perhaps uh, I was hoping and others were hoping would be the case, nevertheless, you have truly uh, given it a robust discussion. So, kia ora koutou. Just before I close this session, I just want to say a particular thank you to you, Mike. Uh, you would have come here to this meeting today with an enormous weight on your shoulders, uh, the weight of your people, the weight of their expectations, and not only for, for of today, but the weight of all those all the decades before uh, where the voices have never been heard at a council table. And you have turned up here today with all of those people behind you wanting to make sure that you could break it today. And uh, I want to say to you, you did them proud.